Okay. So while you guys are cleaning up your uh, saving that, that assignment and stuff, I'm just going to start here. And uh, silver car, the most popular color for cars, period. Not just between 2000 and 2005. Silver has been the most popular for a long time. Uh, you know what's second most popular? Black. Nope. Black, black's common. Red's common, but that's not it. White. White is second. Now, why would silver and white be the top two colors for cars? Give me an idea. Yes. Okay. You're right that they get a good resale value because other people like silver and white. And so if you're sitting there going, well, I don't really care what color my car is, wouldn't it be smart to pick a car that, that will sell better when you want to get rid of it? And since other people like silver and white, do you see how it ends up making silver and white even more popular? Because if you're like, oh, I don't care, whatever, uh, you'll buy one that's easier to resell. If you, if you buy the, like, lime green car, a lot of people seriously, are, when they're looking through your car ads, they're going to be like, ew, I want that car, even though it could be just as good as the other car. So, yeah, you want to pick a car that will sell good, sell well later. Here's one more reason people like those colors. You have two cars sitting in the parking lot all day in Kansas in the middle of summer. <laughs> okay. Talking about the U.S., but anyways, uh, if you have two cars sitting side by side, one's white, one's black, which one would you want to get into after all day in the parking lot? The white one. And we don't think about that uh, that often because in Minnesota, there's not too many of those incredibly hot days. But in some, in a lot of other states, you know, where it's not cold half the year, then they really care about that a lot because, like. Maybe every other day they have a hot day, you know, sun's beating down on the cars. You go out and get into a black car, it would be like getting into a furnace. So that's why you're going to find silver and white be a lot more popular, especially down south. It's a reason we wouldn't think about that much here in Minnesota. All right. So if we were talking probabilities with this, do you know, uh, or even permutations, it's not different ways to arrange it. Uh, I had a guy come out to match the color on my car, and he had a ton of little bottles of paint. And every car color is made up of three or four or five different colors of paint mixed in tiny different amounts, like a little bit more red in this one, a little bit less silver in that one, and they actually weigh the paint to like make the mixture. They don't do it based on like drops. They do it based on weight. So you put in this many, this many grams of this color, and then he pours in, a, you know, has it all on a scale. And then he puts in this many grams of that color and this many grams of that color, and they get it to mix just perfect based on knowing what the formula is. All right, so there's a lot of different combinations. In fact, almost unlimited, as in like billions of different colors for cars because they can mix all these colors together in tiny different amounts. Just a little bit more red and it's still a different color. Okay, anyway. Permutation versus combination. The really important thing to remember is the thing I told you before. The permutation, the order matters. Combination, the order does not matter. You should get on your notes now and you should be on this page so that I can see that you are following with me in the right spot. So if I can't see a pizza on your screen, then you're in the wrong spot. This is today's date, which is 2-7. We're looking for notes for 2-7. Okay? All right, do you remember the tilt thing I said before? That means uh, when I say tilt, I want you to tilt your computer screen towards me so I can see if you're in the right spot. Okay, tilt. All right, make it fast. Dilly didn't see yours. Okay, get there fast. Thank you. Okay, you can untilt. All right, now... Order matters versus order does not matter. I'll give you an example where order matters. The Olympics. Do you think you care much if you finish third or fifth place? Totally care because you're going to get a medal if you're in third place. All right? And it's, you're going to keep that for the rest of your life. And it makes a big deal, big, deal, big difference. Okay? Do you think it matters much if I pick a committee of three kids? If there's this group of three, do you think the order that they are in matters? You three are the ones that I'm going to send to the state or whatever. No, doesn't matter what order. They're just the three kids that get to go. 
gets kind of complicated sometimes because, you know, I, why would I pick those kids? Maybe they were the best kids, and maybe one of them is better than another one. But if you just say a committee of three, that's a combination, and the order does not matter. Pizza, for example. If you order a pizza and you say, I want sausage and pepperoni, and it better be in that order, they're going to think you're crazy. Right? Who orders a pizza in a certain order? Like the sausage, is that pepperoni is on top of the sausage, I'm sending it back. You could probably tell them that. <laughs> I'm sure you could tell them that. But they'd think you're crazy. So again, the pizza, pizza is the order doesn't matter. All right. Um, I'm a little confused why American Idol is over here because it's a contest and you want to be number one. I guess sort of, as long as you don't get voted out, you're okay. Uh, you know, get to the, go to the next show. I'm just trying to figure out why American Idol, the order doesn't matter. I thought it does. Oh, that's true. At the very beginning, when you, when you either get in or you don't get in. Right? They pick you to either be on the show or not. And if you're in the group that's on the show, you made it in and it doesn't matter what order. That's a good point. Okay. Now, this is two formulas you need. And they are not written on yours, but they are on mine. So you need to copy this down. I will move this, or I'll remove this right here. The formula for doing order matters is permutations, and it goes like this. This is getting into some hardcore notation. You guys are in a high-level math class. You can handle this. Write this down. And I'll tell you what each thing mean, means. The fact that you have a P there implies P for permutation and implies the order matters. The N is the number you choose from. For instance, let's say that there were 10 different pizza toppings at the pizza place. Okay, there's 10 to choose from. What do you think R is then? It's the number you actually choose. I'm going to say how many you choose. Do you remember the factorial thing, the little exclamation mark? It was on your calculator. Everybody grab your graphing calculators, get those out. You're going to need those too. So I'm curious, when you guys have a backlit screen, I'm guessing that you don't mind it being darker in the room. Because yeah. like used to be when it was this dark, people would be like, can't see my paper. But you know, you guys can see your paper because you got backlighting. Now at the same time, you've got to be able to see your buttons on your calculator. So I'm going to give you half light then. It'll be sort of like a, a compromise. All right, so let me give you an example of this order matters thing and how you'd use this formula. I want you to add a blank page onto your notes. Know how to do that? Insert. Insert. And you can go with whatever you like. If you like white lines, if you like yellow with lines, if you like blank, that's fine, whatever. All right, and I want to show you an example of one of those. Let's say that I have these seven styluses up here. Okay, seven pens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you get, if I have them numbered, one through seven, you'd like all right on the end, I wrote the little number one on this one, up through seven, that there are seven things to choose from. So that starts the problem, seven. Then I put a P, which implies the order that I have them in matters. And then, let's say I'm only going to pick two of them out of this group of seven. Okay? Do you get that there's a lot of different twos I could pick? Sets of two. And I could pick the silver one and this black one. Or I could take the silver one and the red one. Or I could take two silver ones. Or I could take, you know, the numbers one and six. Or 
Okay, so there's a lot of different combos. In fact, that's what you'll figure out by doing 7P2 is how many different combos there could be. Now, the order matters, meaning that if I put out a black-red, that's different than a red-black. That's a different thing. So that's why there's going to be more than you'd think. All right, now how do I get this answer? Well, that little formula tells you how. If I'm going to do 7P2, I look at this formula, it's this number, the n, the front number, factorial, over the two th numbers subtracted, n minus 2 factorial. So that means that I would have, hold on, 7 factorial over 7 minus 2 is 5 factorial. Now, you do not need a calculator to do this because 7 factorial means 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Don't even have to write all that. It takes too long. Just know it. What do you think 5 factorial is? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Do you get how that and that are going to cancel? And all I'm left, left with is the 7 times 6. And the answer is 42. Now let me show you that there is a P button on your calculator that could have also gotten the answer of 42. Would you grab your calculator, type in a 7, then I'll show you where the P thing is. Hit 7. Say it with me. Some of you don't have a 7 on your calculator yet. Yes? Uh, okay. This number that's on the bottom here is supposed to be this minus this. Okay? All right. Thanks for asking because I do make mistakes. I want to tell you if I, if I have. All right. So back to your calculator. You have a 7 in there now? Hit math. Arrow over to PRB, probability. Find the one that looks like the P thing we just did. The NPR. Yeah, the National Book Radio. NPR. NPR button. Okay, hit that, and then hit 2, and then hit enter. And you get 42. Then you did it wrong. Hit, in, hit a 7, then hit the NPR button which is, again, under math, probability, what? Okay, then you did it wrong. Just type in 7, NPR, and then you have to hit a 2. 7, NPR, 2, enter. 7, NPR button, 2, enter. Who had it to work? Raise your hand if you got it to work. Okay, good. The rest of you, I'm losing hope. 7, and then this, and then 2, and then equals, or enter. Okay? And it'll give you 42. All right, moving on. So that's if its order matters. What if order doesn't matter? Like, for instance, remember I had these seven stylus out on my table here? And if I put out two, and I put out red, uh, red silver, and silver red would be the exact same thing, so I don't even care about the order, that's the kind of problem where order doesn't matter. Do you get how there's going to be a lot less of those? Because the order doesn't matter. If I put out red silver, I'm done. I don't have to like rearrange them. So there's going to be less. So my answer is going to be less than 42. Here's how you find those. I'll get rid of this. Copy that one down. N, C, R. This is where I told you this test is going to be one of the harder ones we have. Now you have two major formulas you're just learning today. N, C, R equals N factorial over N minus R. You may notice this is the exact same thing as the other one. Exact same. The only thing different is there's an extra R factorial on the bottom. Now I'll do an example of that kind. Okay, to get away from the uh, styluses, let's say that I have uh, seven different numbers. Number one, two, three, four, uh, let's start using some funky pens, five, uh, six, and seven, and you're right, I should change the six to something else, let's make the six be like the green highlighting, 
Okay. So now, do you have any idea which two I'm going to pick out of this group of seven numbers? Take a guess. Write it down. I'm going to put out two numbers. Take a guess which ones I'm going to put out. I said I was going to take two numbers, so I have two blanks. Now let's figure out how many different things I could put out before I do. How many choices do I have for the first spot? Tell me how many choices do I have for the second spot? Six. Sometimes six is 42. What would this have been in a permutation? Something P something. How many do I have to pick from? 7P2. And it also comes out to 42. But these don't always work. And these will work for a lot of things that the other kind won't work for. So you need two ways of doing this. All right, now, I, didn't, I haven't put out anything yet. I just calculated what, how many there were. If there's 42 different things, what's the probability you're right on which ones I'm going to pick? One out of 42. See how I changed it to a probability question? That's different. 42 isn't a probability. 42 is how many things there are. Probability is what I want over what's possible. So what I'm going to pick is 32. Did anybody pick 32? I got two. All right. So there's 30 of you. If the room had had 42 kids in it, isn't it pretty likely one of them would have guessed right? There's a decent chance one of them would have guessed right. Not a guarantee. Yes. Yes. All right. If I'm doing a permutation where the order mattered, in other words, what if 23 was the exact same thing as 32? Do you get what I'm saying there? That would mean it's a combination problem. If this or this are the same thing, then it's a combination. Combinations are where order does not matter. But when I say 32, it sounds totally different than 23. And so the order matters in this case. So is this a permutation or a combination? This is a permutation because order mattered. All right, let's do a combination where order does not matter. I am going to pick out two of these numbers in no particular order. As in, they're the two numbers I'm going to send on to the state fair. All right, I don't know why that's not letting me touch. There. Get rid of these. Go away. Go over there somewhere. Okay. So now... I'm going to give you a second chance now to pick what two numbers you think I'm going to select to send on to the national competition. To write down two numbers. And the numbers I chose are 5 and 7. Anybody guess right? Nobody. There was only a, well... In this case, look at I put them on top of each other. See, five and seven. Is seven and five the same thing as five and seven? Yeah. Yeah. So there's less. There's more likely to be right. Did you? Somebody have it right actually? All right. So one person had it right. Now let's think about how many different combinations there were. That's that C thing. How many did I have to choose from? Seven C two. Two things to pick out. Now the order didn't matter. C five seven same as seven five doesn't matter. So there should be less of them. In fact, if you do 7C2 on your calculator, find it. It's right next to the P. 7C2. It should be less than 42. 21. Now, if you think about that, that's half as many. Doesn't that make sense? Because see, before, 5, 7, and 7, 5 would be two different things. So now it's 7 and 5 together, and it doesn't matter what order. That's half as many combos then. So therefore, with 30 of you in here, it was likely one of you was going to guess right. Get what I'm saying? Because there was only a 1 in 21 chance you'd get it right. If I had 21 kids guessing, one of them probably going to be right. Get what I'm saying? Yes? Will it always be half like that? Uh, no, it's not always half. If there's two things, then it's always half. Because there's only two ways to do it, right? 7, 5 or 5, 7. But if I picked out three things, like four, five, and seven, then if order matters, there's lots of different ways to do it. To be specific, there's six different ways you could do it. Do you get what I'm saying? 
then you so don't just assume divide by two. It's divide by two or divide by whatever how many combinations there are to do this. So the main thing to remember there is what's the formula? It's right here. And you throw in an on the combinations, it's exactly like the permutations, except you throw in an extra one of those. Which is an extra one of those. Alright. Now just to see if you get that part, would you please fi figure this out without a calculator? Six P five. If you know the formula, this should be a piece of cake. Six P five. So it's a big fraction, right? K C in the back row. How do you start? Did I? K C, I think, aren't you? Maybe I said your this it wrong. Okay, go ahead. Six factorial over which is one factorial, which by the way is one. And then an extra thing, if it's a, oh wait, no, I'm wrong. It's P, that's it. That's it. That's the answer. Six factorial. So the answer is six factorial, which we'll all know means six times five times four times three times two. And it would take a while to actually multiply that all out, but there'd be a lot of different possibilities. All right. Let's try another one. Nine C nine. 9C9, oh, the other answer? Fine. But this one, 9C9, totally different. I have nine things, and I'm going to choose all nine of them. This is not a probability question, Sonny. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. You're thinking, okay, 9 factorial over 9 minus 9 factorial is 0 factorial. Did you know that that's actually equal to 1? 0 factorial is not 0. It's 1. If you don't believe me, Try it. Type in zero factorial. Factorial thing is under the math button, PRB. Get that that's one? All right. And then I need, for the C's, I need one extra one of these. Nine factorial. So wait a minute. Nine factorial over nine factorial. The answer is one. Now think about it, though. If I had nine things, and I'm going to put all nine of them out, there's only one way to do that, right? Because the order doesn't matter, because it's a C. If the order doesn't matter and I have nine things, I put them all out, there's only one way. All right. So I hope you've learned a few things. Number one, that you use P's when order matters and C's when they don't matter. I hope you've learned that if they give you one of these, you can do it by hand or you can do it on a calculator. And last, I hope you've figured out that probability still is always what you want divided by what's possible. And we were not even doing probabilities. We were mostly doing just what were possible. You know, these are big numbers like 72 or 720. They're not probabilities. They're figuring out how many things are possible. So to get a probability, you're going to divide these things with each other. So a lot of times, and your problems when we get good at this, they'll be like this. 9C2 over... 9C7, that kind of thing, all right? There's going to be a dividing of the two. I'm not saying that that's a right answer to any particular problem. I'm just saying to get a probability, you have to divide. And these numbers we're doing here are just getting us great big totals of how many there could be. All right, so I want to do one last one where it's like actually more like probability. Um, all right. This one's still, this one isn't probability yet, but I still want to do it. Get to example one slide. And then I'll make it into a probability. All right. Let's make it more interesting. What are four, there's four available toppings. What are four of the toppings that you guys like at Dairy Queen? Oreo. Hot sauce. That's disgusting. Not a, not a dar Dairy Queen. Although I will admit, the only thing that's like that is I had a caribou coffee that had uh, some kind of a spicy in their um, hot chocolate. Hot chocolate with uh, some kind of spice in it is really good. It was like hot 
hot, like spicy hot chocolate. It was really good. Try it sometime. Give me some more favorite things you could put like in a blizzard. Reese's. Cookie dough. Brownie. All right. There's a lot of good choices. All right, so now we're even not thinking about things like some of these are not good together. Like, yeah, sushi with Reese's is probably not very good. Um, but like chocolate and peanut butter, two great tastes that taste great together. Those, those work great. But these might not be so good with each other. Reese's and cookie dough? You might be right. I don't know. Reese's and Oreo? I don't know about those two, though. Brownie and Oreo. Brownie and Oreo could work. All right, but my point is we're not trying to figure out which combos work nice. We are now trying to figure out, okay, we have four choices here. And we want two of them to be chosen out. Two. Do you think the order matters? Do you tell the Dairy Queen lady, I want Oreo first, and then you put in the Reese's? So if you do it backwards, I'm not buying it. No, they'll think you're crazy. So, the order does not matter. So this is a combination. Would you please figure out the answer? Either use a C on your calculator, or use blanks, or use the formula I just taught you. All three would work. All right. So here's, here's the right answer as a formula. You'd say it was 4C2. Here's the right answer on your formula like written out. 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial, which by the way would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 and 2 times 1. And then that cancels that. And then 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. And if you just type that in the calculator, it would have said 6. Raise your hand if you had the right answer. Okay, good. You see there's several ways you could have done it. You could have just typed this in. You could have figured it out by hand. Or here's one more way. How many choices did I have for this first thing I put in? How many choices did I have for the second thing I put in? But why doesn't that work? I get 12. <laughs> yes, you divide by 2 and you get 6. But why? So blanks doesn't always work. If you used blanks for this problem, you just failed at it. You would have got it wrong. You thought the answer was 12. All right, so sometimes, sometimes you're right. The order didn't matter. If it was a P, if it was a permutation, it would have been right. Uh, this way doesn't always work either because what if you can repeat things? Like, what if you were allowed to choose two toppings and it could be two sets of Oreo? You know what I mean? They're going to mix Oreo with Oreo. Then it, permutations wouldn't work. So the point is you can't always just say, I'm going to always do this way because it'll always work. Nope. In math, a lot of times you have to have different ways to do things because some ways work for some problems and other ways work for other problems. All right, let's move on to the next. To make this a probability, there were six ways it could have come out. I want you to write down the way you would pick. Remember, you can't double. If I had to pick two of these four toppings, which would you pick in your blizzard? Write it down, and then we'll figure out what's the probability that I'm going to choose the one that you liked. To make, just right now, pick what would be your favorite. Brownie Reese's, or Oreo Reese's, or Oreo Cookie Dough, or Cookie Dough Brownie, or... For me personally, I'd go Reese's Brownie. Did anybody go that way? Yes. All right. So two people said the same thing. Now, what was the probability I was going to pick what you wanted? Well, how many combos were there? Six. That's the point of this whole thing. There were six combos. How many did you want? One. The probability was one in six that I would pick what you wanted. I am curious, how many of you, somebody give me another combo you like. that Brownie Oreo. Who would have gone with Brownie Oreo? 
Ooh, there's a lot of a lot of responses on that one. Who has another one that think it would might be popular? Yes. Brownie cookie dough. Raise your hand if you want brownie cookie dough. Ooh, yeah. That, I have to admit that one sounds good to me too. A lot of kids had that one. All right. Here's one. Take a look at the picture. Ouch. One time I was trying to jump off of a swimming dock and do a backflip. So I lined up, you know, got over the water, right at my toes, my heels over the water, and I jumped, flipped over backwards, and I hit my head on the dock, which really hurts when you're, like, spinning in the air and you hit something really heavy wooden. It's not fun. So then my jaw, like, I hit... I hit my head and it clamped my mouth shut so hard if my tongue would have been sticking out, it would have been like flopping around in the water because it would have chopped it right off. So thankfully it wasn't, but it chopped my teeth together so hard that my teeth actually, some of my teeth uh, like damn it, not, not, not broke, but like shaved off some enamel on my upper teeth. Like my lower teeth mushed into my upper teeth and I had to have the dentist like clean up the little... Uh, Spots that got kind of jaggedy from teeth being smooshed together so hard. So it was pretty dramatic. No, no, I, I typically don't try the backflip anymore because it's, but it was pretty dramatic. I don't want to do that again. All right. So is this one here a P or a C? P. Why does the order matter on this one? First or second place. So it better be a P. Use a calculator. It'll probably go the fastest. Figure out the answer on this one with a calc. Hopefully you're doing 4, P, 2. Raise your hand if that's what you did. Okay, good. And what was the answer, by the way? 12. Is 12 a probability? No, there are 12 different ways it could happen. Let's say that you really wanted it to be Bob in first, and then Frida in second. Well, then you only have one way you're going to be happy out of 12. There's a 1 in 12 chance this is going to work. What if you'd be happy with Bob, Frida, or Frida, Bob? Then there's two out of 12. Or one out of six, chance of that. Yes? Whenever it's blank P2, if you square the first number and then subtract itself from it, it's So like 6 P2 is 3. Remember what this comes from. It come, if I made it 6p2, then what I'm really doing is 6 factorial over 6 minus 2 is 4 factorial, which means, you know, your little pattern will work. That's cool. All right. You know where your homework is. Get her done. I'll see you tomorrow. It's, yes, it's the only one for today. It's 2-7 is the today's date. Find the worksheet that says 2-7 on it. All right.